All right, so this is how nerdy I get about this hobby. Um, man, I love this crap. If you look at the two planes hovering, one of them has a nine and a half pitch prop, the other one has a 10 pitch prop. When you look at it, one of them has a higher RPM than the other one does. And one of them is, is very stiff where the other one is very fluid. I put a different engine in one of my planes. Now I've got to find which prop's going to work best and where my CG needs to be. Today we're going to talk about how I pick my perfect prop. Whether it's a small electric 3D plane or a great big gasser, you have a lot of different options when it comes to props. Different diameter, different pitch. What I'm going to do is just show you the difference in what happens when I have a nine and a half pitch and a 10 pitch prop. I put down four flights, change the CG, change the expo and change the prop. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to start with hovering. Just how these planes behave with the different prop, the different expo, the different CG. All right, we're going to start with the 2895. In the hovers, it's, it's very stiff and very solid, but when it starts to drift, it's hard to catch. You can see here I'm going down and I try to stop the torque roll and it doesn't have enough. There's not enough thrust across my ailerons so I would have to turn up my ailerons to make these work. Um, I don't really like that. You can see I'm doing this little high alpha kind of skip dance thing across the sky and it's kind of cool but it's really stiff. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, now we go 28, 10, leave the CG in the same spot. So it's going to have a rearward CG. Look how much more active the tail is on this. Having that additional thrust over the tail, it now moves very easily. And so I did another flight, changed my expo from 35 to 42 on the elevator. And it's a little more solid, but it's tail heavy. One of the things I can do is with the ailerons, now I can go counterclockwise to the torque of the prop, so it's a lot more powerful. On this flight, I moved the CG forward and my Expo back to normal, and it gives me so much freedom. Look how the tail is not overly active, and I have the ability to move the plane around fluidly. Well, we can't do a lone soul 3D flight without some Harriers. So let's start with the 2895. It's very stiff. Really? Nothing. It doesn't have a whole lot of airflow across the tail as before, but you can see I have the CG back to give it authority and it wants to lift. It's hard to turn. Watch this as I'm trying to turn. I mean, I'm horsing this thing around. It's a joke. So here's the crazy part. If I had been surging the throttle, I would have done just fine. But that's just not how I fly. I fly with a very steady throttle. All right, so this is the 2810 with the same CG as the 95. And watch the ass end of this plane. I mean, it's just a little bit loosey-goosey. It kind of drives me crazy. I've got tons of authority, but actually too much. So as I start moving it around, see, I make a correction and then the plane slides way over too much. And then I have to make another correction and kind of bail out. And see, I make a correction there and the plane kind of slides out too much. That's what a little bit too tail heavy looks like. All right, so on this flight, all I did was just turned up the Expo a little bit, went from 35 to like 42. And it just softened up that tail so it didn't grab so much. Same CG. But look at the difference in 7% Expo. Look how much more authority I have. The plane still, the CG, or the CG is too far back for me, but I have the authority. Now, this is where I've moved the CG forward with the 2810. And look how solid it is. That's the difference between a quarter of an inch on the CG and a half a pitch on the prop. It's, it's a completely different plane. It's so much more solid. The 2995, that gives a whole new meaning to a waterfall. Look at that thing drop. With my steady throttle, 
flying style, I just can't get enough air to tell. A lot of times you'll hear somebody surge their throttle and they'll do that wum 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 with their throttle and they're pushing air across and this might be a great prop for them. The 2810 with the rearward CG, the tail drops clear down on that. The 2810 with a little more expo, I can kind of catch the tail a little bit but it still has a lot of push. This is what I'm looking for right here. Watch this, it just kind of mushes through. Boom. Right there, that's the difference. That forward CG with the 2810 prop, it's great. Rolling Harriers look at 2895, you can see it almost looks like it has a forward CG because I'm not getting enough air across the surfaces. So the nose is staying a little bit low and it's rolling kind of fast. They're okay. If I really work hard for it, I can get it really steep but it's stiff as a board. It's just rough. And here, I actually take a little bit of time, I work with it, and I could get a good, steep rolling Harrier, but I'm running a much higher RPM than I normally do, and I'm really working hard to keep it axial. Okay, now we go to the loose rear end rolling Harrier, and it's tail heavy. You can see it. it's, the tail is dropping too much. The tail is drifting to the left, to the right. I don't have a lot of control. I am getting it downfield because of my inputs, but it's not, it's fighting. By adding a little bit of expo, the tail is not out of control, but it's still up and down a little bit, and it's not locked in, it's loose. Now watch how axial these are with the forward CG. Okay, the tail has still got some drag to it every now and then. That's part of a rolling Harrier, but I'm I'm axial. All the inputs are the same, and when I'm axial, then I can actually do something a little different here. You can see I'm doing this rolling Harrier, and now I can I can turn it to the left, and then I can turn it to the right. Granted. I, I make a mistake here, it's not as fluid as it should be, it drops down and then it comes back up. But both directions are very axial and that makes doing rolling hairs a million times easier. All right, we're gonna do some spins, starting out with the 9.5. The inverted flat spin on the 28.9.5 is actually really nice. It flows really well and it looks really really good the plane doesn't it's not tail heavy anything but look at this the 2810 now we come over oh wow the tail went clear over and i had to actually catch it it, it just went all squirrely because too much tail authority here's adding a little bit of expo to that and although i spin this down kind of smoothly it's tail heavy you can see the tail dropping it's i'm working hard here is the forward cg it's very clean, axial, it's very in the center, right on the CG, uh, it just works. All right, we're gonna go to knife edge spins. The 2895, I gotta use a lot of throttle to make the 2895 work, and it spins fairly decent in the knife edge. Spin. I couldn't even get the 2810 to bite on the first one, so this is with the high expo, and you can see the tail is, it's pulling it off of center. And then, of course, this is with the forward CG. So as you would expect, the spins are tighter. I can spin it more. It's easier to get out, less radical. It just behaves better. All right, let's do some tail slides. This is a tail slide with the 9.5. We drop down, go into an inverted flat spin. All right, so this is the 2810 with the higher expo. Watch the tail drop clear down right there. The tail goes clear down uh, with the lower expo. It was awful. And then this is the forward CG. It's just more graceful. It's more beautiful. It's just locked in. All right, let's get into landing these planes. Um, this is the 9.5. Uh, I come in and it's got a little more drag, not as much momentum and watch. Boom. Ground. It, it, it just dropped out from underneath me. Uh, this is the rearward CG lower expo. 
I'm shooting right for the downhill and I kind of grease it in, but you can see it flared on me there. The higher expo and rearward CG on flat and level flight has me kind of flopping around there. It's, it's not as stable. Uh, I come in to land and it starts porpoising on me, which is definitely a tail heavy plane. And that brings us to the perfect setup for me, for my plane, and that is the 2810 with the forward CG. Runway's a little bit chewed up, so I fly over and just grease it on the grass. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, leave your comments below, and happy landings.